Good afternoon and welcome to the Church of the Holy Trinity in Juneau, Alaska, as we pause in the middle of the day to pray for the world. The service can be found on our website, trinityjuno.org. Click on the Noonday Prayers link and just scroll down to Thursday. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Today's psalm is part one of Psalm 18. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O God, my stronghold, my craig, and my haven. My God, my rock, in whom I put my trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation and my refuge, you are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over. Torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me, and the snares of death were set for me. I called upon the Lord in my distress and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heaven. Apostles. 
When the fourteenth night had come, as we were drifting across the Sea of Adria, about midnight the sailors suspected that they were nearing land. So they took soundings and found twenty fathoms. A little farther on they took soundings again and found fifteen fathoms. Fearing that we might run on the rocks, they let down four anchors from the stern and prayed for day to come. But when the sailors tried to escape from the ship and had lowered the boat into the sea on the pretext of putting out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the boat and set it adrift. Just before daybreak, Paul urged all of them to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been in suspense and remaining without food, having eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take some food, for it will help you survive, for none of you will lose a hair from your heads. After he had said this, he took bread, and giving thanks to God in the presence of all, he broke it and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged and took food for themselves. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars, then hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow stuck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none might swim away and escape, but the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump aboard first and make for the land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and other on, others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, give your blessings to the Diocese of Alaska. Watch over our churches, sustain our people, strengthen our leaders. Through the Holy Spirit, guide and guard the diocese, keeping it always under your care and protection. Let us be a loving family, serving you in faithful devotion to the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give your blessings to Mark, our bishop, Give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love. Let your Holy Spirit be his companion. Let your gospel be always in his thoughts. May your presence in his life be a light for all to see in every good work for the building up of your people and to the glory of your holy name. Give us the blessing of your example. Help us to follow the way of Jesus today and every day. Give us compassion at the center of all we do. Compassion for ourselves as disciples still young in faith. Compassion for others as members of our own family in God. Let us become examples for others as so many others have been examples to us through your love and for the sake of your glory. Watch over all elders and the brothers and sisters of the Society of St. Simeon and St. Anna. If any are in a time of sorrow, sickness, or need, give them the touch of your healing hand. If any are in times of joy, thanksgiving, or fulfillment, give them the song of angels to praise your name. 
Let us be your servants in this life, just as we will be your sons and daughters in the life to come. I invite you to add your prayers and petitions at this time. Phil and Janet. Larry, Terrence, Wilson. All those affected by this pandemic. Amen. Forward Day by Day has given us a season of prayer for an election. Today seems very appropriate. We are today we're praying for judges, magistrates, and courts of justice. Almighty God, who sitteth in the throne judging right, we humbly beseech thee to bless the courts of justice and the magistrates in this land, and give unto them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that they may discern the truth and impartially administer the law in the fear of thee alone, through him who shall come to be our judge, thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we remember Teresa of Avila, reformer and contemplative. She was born in 1550 in Avila, Spain. Um, she was one of 10 children and joined the Carmelite convent in Avila when she was 20. She became seriously ill, and when she recovered, she was a little lax in her prayer life, but soon she began having visions, and it deepened her devotion. Well, the word that was used was extreme. She decided in 1560 that the Carmelites had strayed very far from their original intent, and she felt the need to reform. Um, her proposed reforms included strict enclosure, which meant that the nuns could not go out and party at social gatherings, and that they couldn't have social visitors at the convent, but would spend their waking hours in prayer. Um, this was not very popular. So eventually, she formed her own order of Carmelites, uh, which was eventually recognized by the Pope. And so now there are actually two different orders of Carmelites. You've got the ones that the ancient observance ones, which go out into the world and work in the world. And then you've got the ones that are called discaled or shoeless, who live lives of poverty and devotion and prayer. Those are the ones I think we think of most, the cloistered ones. She wrote a couple of books, including The Way of Perfection and The Castles of the Soul. And uh, they're still used today in many cases for Christians of all denominations as devotional books. She wrote, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, you move Teresa of Avila to manifest to your church the way of perfection. Grant us, we pray, to be nourished by her teaching and enkindle within us a keen and unquenchable longing for true holiness. Through Jesus Christ, the joy of loving hearts, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.